Hi everyone, welcome back to another truck camper rebuild video. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the roof of my camper. So that's gonna cover like the teardown process of the roof, the insulation, the wiring, the headliner material, and a few other odds and ends that go with that. I'll also briefly cover the lifting system, but I've got plenty of other videos about that already, so I won't go into deep detail here. Also, be sure to stay tuned to the end of this video. I'm giving away some more four-wheel camper gear and stick around to learn how you can win some of that. So the first thing we had to do after, of course, removing the roof from the camper was remove the old side liner or canvas material. This canvas is actually sandwiched underneath a trim piece on the roof. Here's a quick schematic I made from my build page over at wanderthewest.com. A couple people had asked me about how kind of the uh, roof, the roof, frame, the roof material, and the canvas all kind of get sandwiched together, and so I made this schematic so people can start to understand when they do these projects in the future. Unfortunately, if you remember, I didn't ever know that I was going to do a full rebuild on this, so I had actually painted this roof a few months before this project, or years maybe, yikes. And so there's a ton of paint over all the screws on this trim piece, so it took quite a bit of patience, the right tool, but eventually I was able to remove all the screws for the trim all the way around and get that canvas out of there. I'll remind you that during this build project, I was actually on a pretty tight budget because I was still in grad school. And so because of that, I decided not to replace the metal roof. It did have a couple of cracks and things like that that I JB welded, but in general, it was actually pretty watertight. The metal was still in good shape and already freshly painted. So I decided to keep all that metal, just redoing the insulation and interior objects that really needed it. Real quick, here's actually a picture of the canvas or sideliner material that I'd taken off of the camper. You can see it's in pretty rough shape. Uh, you know, put 25 years outdoors and for some reason things started to age. Originally I thought I would keep that to use as a template for my new canvas, but in the end I really barely looked at that thing again. I did start to look into it a little bit, but it was so beat up, plus I couldn't really like dissect the sewing patterns. I don't know enough about sewing, so I ended up just winging everything when I made my own canvas. If you're interested in that, I got three whole videos about the build and sewing project. I'll link to those below so you can go check out that canvas build. Even with the canvas and trim off of the roof, there was still a ton of paint and gunk and sealing and all sorts of crap that just had to come off that roof so that way it was fresh and ready to be built back up again. The other thing that was on that roof was so many staples. This canvas had been stapled into the aluminum all the way around and I had to pull all those staples off. If you remember from my floor pack video, I talked about staples before. If you're ever doing a redo project like this, those staples will become the bane of your existence. Uh, I needed some pliers, a lot of flathead screwdrivers, and a whole lot of patience to slowly pull all those staples out and bring that frame back down to usable shape. You can see this project actually took all the way into the night, which is a bit rough, but in the end, we had a bare frame that was ready to be built back up. Everything was looking great. The frame was actually in solid shape, no cracks, anything like that. We were ready to go. So with the roof prepped, the next step was to get the roof ready for solar. I had big visions to install solar on this roof. I already had a panel, if you remember. It came in a small little 20 watt panel that I was stoked about. So I wanted to get the roof well suited to handle solar, both that 20 watt unit that I put on immediately and any solar upgrades I would make in the future. A critical component for this solar is the pass-through that takes the wires from the exterior side of the roof to the interior. I did not want to just go budget on this and just cut a hole, push some wires through, and put a whole lot of sealant and caulk around it, hope for the best. I know how important it is for the roof to be watertight, so I went ahead and bought the proper part to do that. Also, this part was only like 10 bucks, so don't save money here, save money somewhere else, save money on beer buy this type of part. There's a ton of companies that make these pass-through S type of things. Uh, they're pretty neat, actually. They have these little, like almost sphincter-like mechanisms where the wire passes through and you can tighten these grommets around the wire to make it watertight. I'll be sure to link below to the exact unit that I use. You can find a million different options for this. I know the big name brands make these. I think I bought a Chinese version, but they all work about the same and I've been happy with my cheapo version for the past three years. To install a pass-through like this, you just have to cut yourself a generous hole in your roof, which now that I'm saying it does sound kind of scary. And when I was doing it, I was quite scared as well. Again, the roof had been watertight before I had owned it, so I didn't want to compromise that now. Even though I was a bit nervous, I still went ahead and grabbed the Dremel and a cutting wheel and just cut a nice little square hole. Uh, the only thing it has to do is be sure that it's inside the size of your pass-through. You don't want to make it too big. That's the only mistake you can make. Then to attach this pass-through to the roof, I used a material called VHB. It's a 3M product. It's essentially a double-sided tape, but a very good double-sided tape. You've actually probably seen it before. Uh, all GoPros come with it. So that backside, there's these little red stickies that are on the backside of GoPro mounts. That's 3M tape. 
Also, quick fun fact, I've actually used it in my professional life. We use it to make some soft robotic actuators. I made a material called a Wolverine material itself here. You could cut it and it would uh, continue to work. I'll link to the YouTube video that talks about that uh, either down below or up above. Uh, if you wanna check out what I do in my professional life, go check that out. VHB, it's being used in so many circumstances. Still, even with using VHB, I was worried about water tightness. So inside of the pass-through area, I actually put down a bead of butanol tape. And then outside, after I had applied the VHB, I, of course, used a sealant all the way around, a silicone caulk. Um, so I would suggest definitely the silicone caulk. The butanol tape was probably overkill. It's probably just dried and doing nothing in there right now. So probably wouldn't suggest that. But who knows? It's working, so maybe it did do something. But I think between the VHB and the silicone caulk, you're going to be in great shape. For solar, I chose to go with 10 gauge wire. I know there's all sorts of information about this. Uh, the problem is the better wire you get, the more expensive it is. So I thought the 10 gauge was a good compromise. It's plenty thick. Again, I have a pretty low power system. I actually have no power system. I never did install solar. Uh, we can talk about that later. Uh, but essentially, I do have 10 gauge solar wire up there ready for a unit whenever it needs to be done. Uh, just run those cables through, run them down into the roof, and you're good to go. The only thing I want to highlight here as well, though, is that when the wires passed into the roof, I did tape that with some electrical tape or duct tape. Uh, you don't want any sharp edges near your wires, of course. So when you're doing a project like this, do be sure to make sure you avoid sharp edges. I then ran the wires to one of the corners of the roof, and it just drops down into the galley area in my camper. So, of course, you don't want your wires falling straight through the middle of your roof. Just put them over to a side, and you'll be ready to go. So with the solar wires run into the inside of the camper, I also wanted to run my wires for my lights and also a future fan. I do have a vent right now, but I do not have a fan. I never did install a fan, but the wires are there if I ever need to do it. I don't have to redo the whole roof to run some wires. If you recall from some of my earlier videos, I talked about why I bought this camper. And one of the main reasons was to go skiing in the winter. In the winter, it gets dark early. So I knew I'd be spending a lot of time inside the camper in the night. Because of that, I wanted plenty of light. I went with four lights around the camper, so that way there would be plenty of light to do whatever we want to do. In hindsight, definitely think this was a great idea. I love all the light that I have in my camper now. Also, because these are simply small little light systems, and especially now that they're LED systems, the current draw is minuscule. And so you don't need expensive wire to do this anyways. Because I think I used 16 gauge wire to get this job done. You can buy tons of that. I think I bought like 200 feet off eBay for like 20 bucks. I'll link below if I still have that link. If you're redoing a roof like this, don't skimp on your wire because you don't want to come back in here later and redo your insulation or your headliner because you want to now run a fan. Just run the wire now. It's going to cost you like $2 in wire and a whole lot of headache in the future though. One thing I will note is that the wires do pass through the frame in a few different spots as they're kind of moving through these big frame members. And in all those pass-throughs, I again wanted to make sure that the wires didn't rub against the bare metal and slowly and surely kind of uh, eat away at the wire covering and eventually cause a short. And so what I did was actually found some old vacuum hose and just shoved it in each of those, glued it up, and then the wire passes through that nice plastic area instead. Totally kind of jerry-rigged it, but it's definitely going to work and do the job that it needs to do of protecting the wire. After the wires were run everywhere they needed to be put, I did go ahead and tape them to the roof so that way they weren't moving around playing with the insulation or anything like that. I also took pretty detailed measurements of where those wires were. So if anything was to ever to happen, I would potentially be able to find them without tearing apart my entire roof. Uh, luckily, I haven't had to do that at all. Everything's been working great, but it's good to know I can find those in the future if I need to. Before I move further on this project, I did go ahead and install my lights really quick and then just plug those wires into a battery to make sure everything was working properly. I was very fortunate, didn't have any issues. 12 volt wiring is one of my favorite ever. It's very straightforward stuff. Um, and so I was happy to see that that quick gut check was successful. We are now ready to move on and start doing insulation. For insulation, I actually went back and forth between fibrous uh, traditional insulation and rigid foam insulation. I've heard of people using both. If you recall in my uh, walls, I use rigid foam, but for the roof, I didn't know what to use. Uh, there's a lot of debate online about what to use, but what I ended up doing was actually called the guys over at All Terrain Camper, not Forward Camper, but they're 
kind of very similar competitors. Um, and they were super fortunate to tell me what they use. And they use a material called duct insulation. You can get this at literally Home Depot or Lowe's or anything. And it's that classic fibrous but silver backed insulation that people wrap around ducts, around cooling ducts, heating ducts, everything like that. I think it's got an R value of six um, and it's pretty good stuff. It's also somewhat like water resistant apparently. So that's what I went with. The guys are using it that make these things professionally. I figured it was good enough for them. It was good enough for me. The reason I did not go with the rigid foam is that I've heard that the rigid foam can actually squeak a lot when that roof is moving, which it will often move in the wind at night. And so I've heard that people have put that up there and it goes squeak, squeak, squeak uh, in your roof while you're trying to sleep. Not the funnest thing in the world. Plus, it's a little heavier. So because of all of those things, I went with the fiber-based stuff. To install this insulation, as you can imagine, it is a quite straightforward process. Literally just dropping in place and cutting to length. Uh, you'll see I grab a big smile on my face when an easy project like this comes along and actually goes smoothly. As you know, throughout this build process, I've had plenty of issues around uh, things not working the way I thought they would or me ruining pieces of material that were expensive or hard to get. And so the insulation was just a breeze to do. If I can do it, anybody can do it. After I did have that insulation in, I did go ahead and check to make sure those lights worked again, just rigged them up real quick. Everything was still looking good, so let's keep moving forward. The next step after the insulation was to put in the headliner material. For this, I of course spent some time researching what other people had used and what were some possible options on the market. Some people have used just traditional automotive headliner material and probably had decent success, but I heard the best thing to use was actually a marine grade headliner. I purchased mine from a place called, let me look it up, uh, Upholstery Supply Online. Uh, it was a bit pricier premium for that marine grade stuff, uh, but I went ahead and did it anyways. I'm pretty happy with the results since then too, have had zero quality issues. Unfortunately, because of the lengths and widths that this comes in, I had to buy enough to run two strips down my roof. Obviously my roof's pretty wide, it's like 84 inches or something like that. You hide that seam with a piece of wood, which we'll get into later, but again, I needed two pieces uh, in order to make this all work. To attach the headliner material to the roof, I used the 3M product, the 90 spray. Again, you can find this in any big box store. I use this 90 spray for a variety of other projects on the camper, including installing the carpets, uh, installing some of the paneling. It's just been really useful everywhere. So you just take this spray, put it down, wait 30 seconds for it to become tacky, and then push on your headliner. I think you spray both sides. I don't remember. I haven't used it in a while. It says on the back of the can. You can figure it out. For this process, we definitely did spray the middle seam area first and then kind of pull the headliner out. You're not pulling it and stretching it aggressively, but you are just trying to make sure there's no uh, slack in it and just kind of bring it out to the sides. Then you'll have some excess that you just need to cut off around. Make sure you don't cut the headliner just real tight to the frame. You want enough to roll it over your frame, uh, to roll it, kind of tuck it under the uh, roof if you would. Um, so just a quick note on that. Don't just cut it exactly to the length of that. You want an excess, maybe a half inch that rolls over the frame and tucks under the roof. With the headliner material installed, it was now time to put on some wooden runners. For whatever reason, these are put into the camper. I think they're to hold up the headliner if the glue doesn't work appropriately. The camper had them before, so I put them in again. Before, I think the camper had like really thin stuff, like one eighth inch. I actually just use quarter inch trim piece that I got at the local big box store. Uh, that way I don't have to do much cutting at all. I just stained those up real nice over the course of a few days leading up to this project and then installed these runners along the frame pieces all the way around. Because these are such small pieces of wood, as in they're very thin and not very wide either, um, I did, of course, pre-drill everything. And then when I was tightening these in with some very tiny screws, I hand tightened everything so I wouldn't strip anything. I think I probably had a couple of spinners, but it was no big deal. Here was a time when I made sure I spaced my screws very evenly because you can see those screw heads uh, in the camper. It's part of the interior of the camper. And so you want to make sure everything looks nice. I was really fortunate that my sister and my wife were both helping me out this day to um, you know, add that touch of, of niceness that sometimes I overlook just to get a job done. With those wood runners on, the roof was really starting to look great. Here it is in the garage, ready to kind of be installed later. A couple of points that I wanna add. Uh, two pieces that aren't on this roof right now are actually two just big pieces of wood that I use as lifter things. If you've seen me pop the roof up on my camper before, you kind of just got to pick up the roof with your hands or with your shoulder and you need something to push on. You don't want to just push into the insulation. And so both in the front and back of the camper, I just have some big one by sixes or 
Uh, yeah, one by sixes that um, I are just kind of big pushing platforms. I also hang stuff off of them. Also, you notice that the edges of the sideliner are not complete and that the trim piece is not put on yet. Again, in the schematic I showed you before, you can see how the sideline or the canvas tucks under the trim, how the headliner also tucks under there. And so because of that, the edges of this roof were going to stay incomplete until the canvas was done. The canvas was the very next project I moved on to. Again, there's videos of that if you're interested. Uh, but in this video, we're going to keep moving forward and talk about how we installed this roof onto the camper. To attach the roof to the camper and to also act as a roof lifting mechanism, I went with a three quarter inch EMT system that I found from some other user on wandathewest.com. Uh, I already have a couple of videos about that lifter. People are really interested in it. But again, just to briefly recap how that works is essentially I'm using three quarter inch EMT aluminum from the local big box store. I'm making sure that the pivot between the two pieces is exactly in the middle. If not, it won't close correctly. Then I'm going to jerry rig some mounting systems for both the top and the bottom. The bottom's the tricky part. Go check my other video for all the discussion about that. Then I'm going to install that janky hardware onto the camper and voila, your roof is attached to your camper. For me, this was a very major milestone. It was so great to have a roof over my head finally. Again, if you want more information about that lifting system, go check out my other videos linked below. But the only thing left to do was to install the lights and call this roof done. I went with four lights, like I said before, because I imagined I would be in here a lot in the evening and I wanted plenty of light. Also, what was really cool was that I put LED bulbs into all of these lights and that's completely awesome. So I have six bulbs up there. Two lights are doubles, two lights are singles. Uh, and when all of those are on, I'm only pulling 1.6 amps. So that's incredibly low. Uh, I could run that thing all day off my battery and uh, it still wouldn't get very low at all. So very happy with the lighting in the camper, very happy with the roof in general and how this project came together. Uh, it really looks great. It felt great to be in there. Uh, we were really getting excited when we got to this milestone in the camper rebuild. And with that, I just want to briefly tell you what's coming up next in this build series and also give you a little information about a giveaway. So what's coming next is I'm finally going to get back into some new camping material. And when I say new, I mean doing new projects, not just talking about them. So if you recall, I'm actually doing this is a recap of work I did actually a few years ago, but just to kind of build a better story around what it took to get the camper to what it is today. But now I'm going to move forward and do some projects in the camper. I still need to put the solar and the electrical up to snuff. There's still a lot of things I need to do for like small little storage solutions uh, that are like 80% done, but I just need to make like a little box and things like that. So I still need to get that all sorted out. I'm going to revamp my bed area and come out with a video about the bed and then also maybe do the water system. Stay tuned for that. If you have anything that you're specifically interested in, uh, let me know and I'll be sure to put those projects to the front and get that information out to you as quickly as possible. But that's what's coming up next and I'll have a video recapping the plans for 2020 for the camper out soon. And now finally for the giveaway. Uh, when I was doing some sponsored videos for Four Wheel Camper uh, a few months ago, they were fortunate enough to send over a ton of t-shirts and I still have some leftover t-shirts that I wanna make sure I get out to you guys. So we're gonna do a giveaway in this video because why not? Uh, the t-shirts are absolutely rad. Four Wheel Camper logo on the front, Four Wheel Camper logo on the back. The only issue about this is that I only have mediums and smalls left. And so if you're a full size adult male like me, uh, that might not work out for you. Maybe you can get into a medium, uh, but if not, maybe get one of these for your wife or your kids or whatever. If you're interested in a small or medium, let me know. And how you enter this giveaway is that you simply leave a comment below. Any comments at all, tell me what you liked about this video. Just say, hey, tell me what you didn't like, anything at all. And then after a few weeks, I will, T take all those, pick a random winner or two, and then get these out to you. I ship them to you at my cost, no big deal at all. Um, I will think I will do two t-shirts in this videos. And so I have two smalls and a medium left. Uh, you will just get whichever size works for you. And even if neither of those sizes works for you, still enter the giveaway because I also have stickers and patches. The four wheel camper patches are actually really rad. And then of course I still have, oh, I still have stickers. These are my stickers. These are for sale on my website at tgmorsey.com slash stickers. I would love to you for you to buy one. $3.99 supports the channel, but we'll be giving away a couple of these in the giveaway as well. So enter first place, second place, gonna get some t-shirts. And then if you don't want a t-shirt for some reason and you're one of those people, we'll send you some patches or third place, we'll get patches. We'll get some stuff to you. Just go ahead and drop a comment below. We'll get you some four wheel camper gear and some stickers.
with that as always thank you for watching this was a really fun video this roof was an awesome build for me it came out beautifully continues to hold up beautifully super happy with everything about it so hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching give this video a like it really helps me out also if you're not already do subscribe we'll see you next time